sorry, but it's a little bit windy at the moment. Uh, but I thought I'd show you a little bit of video about how this is working out. Now, you'll notice that's the linkage I've made down here at the bottom. It's just um, a pipe with an M12 bolt running through it. So it swivels. And um, on here, I've got a locking nut down at the bottom and a little bit of spacing pipe so that I can wind that locking nut up against the pipe to lock this wing nut here. Now, that'll make sense now. When, when I wind this wing nut back down, just spin it down there, you'll see the idea of this box piece that I've made. Basically, it's, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but, but um, basically that slides in and out of there and um, you can wind that nut up against the bottom and that locks that bar inside that box so it won't come out. Now, if I was to rotate that round there, you can see that this could have a hinge fitted on it some, somehow here and it could be fitted up underneath the pipe that's underneath the gun, um, you know, the recoil pipe. And that way, if I was to take the um, right, if I was to move this gun up and gun up and down, you can see this will actually swing with the gun, so it will allow the gun to elevate up and down, uh, but it will lock the traverse of the gun. It'll stop it moving left and right, at least by any uh, large degree. So that's the idea of this thing. So basically that's the idea. I can lock the traverse by winding this wing nut up here against this um, box coupling that I've made. It's not particularly a beautiful item but um, it, it works. It does the job. So Once again That's how it swings in and out. Yeah, so uh, I've started uh, working on a few of the other small parts. Now, a few parts I'm working on now are I'm trying to sort out the latches which hold the front and um, the lower shield up. Okay. Here's the front of the, the real gun and uh, if you look there you can see what the catch looks like. It's basically a triangular piece of folded steel with a bar running across over to another one on the other side of the barrel which you can't see from here. Um, so the position where it's fixed is just slightly right of the um, traverse gearbox unit here and it's welded to the main axle of the, uh, the carriage. So uh, basically I've looked at various pictures, exploded views and I've come up with this pattern. Um, basically I've sat there and I've drawn this up in cardboard. Now if I fold that correctly it should look pretty much like that. So uh, basically today I've gone out there and I've uh, 
cut these out in steel, 3 mil steel plate, and I folded them. So I've now got two of those to be uh, which I've made. Now, if you want some dimensions, personally, I, I'm actually wondering now whether these are a little bit short. I think if I was to make them again, I would make them maybe six inches in length. These are actually about four and a half inches long, and let's see how wide they are. Two inches wide there, and they're two inch wide there because they're actually going to be mounted and welded onto a two inch wide axle which is a piece of scaffold piping so you can see the shape of them once again there's the profile before I uh, folded the metal Now, the other things I'm working on are the components for, let's see, let me find them all, components for the uh, trails, or the end of the trails, and that's uh, these parts here. So, this is uh, the two well, what, I don't know what the proper technical names for these are, but they're the parts which uh, bury into the ground and stop the carriage uh, recoiling backwards. So, uh, for want of a better term, at the moment I'll just call them like shovel plates. Um, so, those I will show you in a moment, what I've worked out. I've actually scaled mine down a little bit because I think the metal used here on the originals is a little bit larger so I've scaled mine down a little bit so that they look in proportion with it not a lot hopefully but just a, just a bit so that they don't look silly now um, yeah the other part I've done is this catch here see this um, this like swing over lever now, what I've basically done is I've worked uh, how to make one of those out. It's just two, piece, uh, two pieces of steel and they're folded in such a way that you've got a pin running across it at that point there and then it's slightly stepped out and then you've got a bolt on each side which holds it. Now these two pieces of steel are then brought together and welded around the edge and then they have a pin fitted through and that's welded so this is what I've made I think what I've made is a little bit larger than the original one um, and I don't actually mind that um, what I'm intending to do is possibly um, use like a piece of channeled steel and weld the channeled steel down and then bolt that across to the steel channel then instead of having this little unit there which if, I, if I zoom in on that you'll notice this unit here presumably has the original one I think must have a hole in the side just here and then there's a tube mounted down on the trail presumably it has a spring inside it and some form of lever here which releases that, that pin which obviously is spring loaded inside there and then you can raise this component up like so and uh, that releases a hook which goes into this uh, eye bolt here 
which is adjustable. Now, what I'm intending to do for this part is not do it that way because I think that the spring, which is obviously inside here, would eventually corrode and start giving problems. So I'm just going to piece, uh, weld a piece of channel down and then have a pin which runs across maybe like a large split pin or some form of locking pin, pin which I can slide across and stop that jumping upwards so that's the idea around that part now this eye bolt part I've actually got some bits of old scaffold zoom out again yeah, I've got some bits of old scaffold lying around and what I think I'll do is I will uh, grind that pin off there and I'm going to use this part here with the nut that's on it and I'll have to rig up some form of eye bolt to go on to the end of this. So that's going to be the other part that works for that. Now the shovel parts that I've worked out look like this. Now if I get steel rule and lie that across there, I've drawn them up in metric and they're actually 20 centimeters wide by 24 centimeters deep. Um, that part there is nine centimeters. The angles there, that's nine centimeters. That's nine centimeters. And that there is around um, twelve and a half centimeters. So you can, you know, the other side's the same, obviously. Now what I'm then doing is between that point there and that point there I'm putting a fold in it like so and the idea is this is going to be that part there on the shield yeah so what I'm going to do is the steel box section I'm going to cut an angle in the steel box section running back so that that point there downwards is halfway down into the box section then it drops vertically so it's going to be like that then this part here I'm going to put another bend in this now I'm not going to bend it across at the corner points I'm going to bend it a couple of centimetres back up, in fact, yeah, I've written on um, seven centimetres, 70 millimetres to that fold point there. So it's going to look sort of like that. This part here, um, what I'm doing with this part is if I was to get, let's see where have I got, if I was to get a, an angle, um, an engineer square, what I'm intending to do is have 25 millimeters at that point there, then this part here where the metal meets again where the top of the box section blends in that's going to be um, approximately 40 to 45 millimeters and then I'm going to weld all the way around where the um, shovel meets the box section now this lower piece here I'm going to have a different angle on it and I'll show you what I've done right basically cut two of these out now in steel there's the flat plate that's three mil steel I'm using again 
the original ones would probably be about quarter inch plate but uh, I think 3 mil will do for what I'm doing now, here is the uh, first one that I folded so you can get a bit of an idea of uh, how I'm making it look so, so there's your angle Hopefully uh, what I'm doing makes some sense, so I'll get on with things and uh, let you have a look. Okay, once they're welded on, they should look pretty much like that. Uh, if I show you the real one, which is in a similar view to that, looks like so yeah now the next part that I want to do is um, well I previously mentioned I've got this component which is that part there going to double up for that so that's going to be seating just about there when we look at the picture now the other part that's quite interesting is this locating pin arrangement now you can see the side here appears to have a large ball on the end of it which fits into a cup on the other side on the other on the other trail arm so I've been looking around and the nearest thing I can I can come up quickly with an answer to this is a piece of one inch box section. I just haven't happened to have an off cut from a previous job. Um, so I can weld a piece of one inch box section somewhere approximately here, uh, right across the this steel box, but just weld that down and on the end of it just weld a ball bearing. Now my ball bearing as you probably just noticed rolled off across the floor and is here. So if I basically place that on there I can MIG weld that ball bearing onto the end of it. The other option is that I just get some bar and I turn it with my lathe and run the stub of the bar down inside there then I can make it how I want it but a ball bearing is a quite hard material um, so basically the quick answer is just weld that onto there so I'm going to go and give that a bit of a go and see how it go uh, just one point though before I do go and weld that You'll notice that there's some webs on the side of this, as you see in the original picture down here. Now, I've made those also out of 3mm steel plate, and they are 20, yeah, 24 centimeters long by 15 centimeters at their maximum depth. And obviously, they're profiled so that they fit in around the shape of the um, shovel component. I still don't know the proper name for these. So uh, obviously, you've got to profile them. So you can cut a piece out in cardboard after you've welded these parts onto your box. Then cut a piece of cardboard out that, that fits then um, all four of them because there's one on each side yeah so you need four of these should all be near enough the same shape so just cut them out and then weld them round along the top on the diagonal there and all the way around here I've not welded them on the inside underneath I don't think there was any need for that right well that didn't take very long to do 
you see I've welded the ball bearing on just quickly and filed it back a bit. Now the other thing I've done is I've decided to cut the um, one inch box section down and um, I've taken a, a slice out of it so that I can sit it down onto the box section, onto the two inch box section like so. So you can see that's uh, that slice I've taken out there is about two inches in length. Uh, this is a one inch box. So the total length of this thing is three and a half inches. And uh, that will basically sit pretty much in that position there. Now I can weld that all the way around. Um, if I want to, I can also do something like uh, you can see in this picture, see it's got some webs running up to it to reinforce it coming in from the sides. In fact, in reality, I, th I suspect that one was a complete piece of folded steel plate which was stamped. But um, I think this is going to give it a uh, reasonable look. I think that will work out. Yeah, so uh, the other part to think about is going to be that side. I suspect it's going to be maybe another piece of box section on the other side with a piece of tubing welded on it to slide over the ball bearing. I think that will work out quite well. You can see I've uh, shaped the rear end of this, I've just taken a, a notch out of the metal there and bent it over to give it uh, that um, tapered, you know, blending in look. Um, as I say, the metal I'm using here seems to be a lot different to what's in the original picture, but uh, as long as uh, it gives the overall appearance of being authentic. Um, I'm quite happy with it. I managed to find a piece of stainless steel pipe. It wasn't quite the right size to fit over the ball bearing, but that doesn't matter. So what I've done is I've just put a, a slot down the side of it and knocked it onto the end of my bearing. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this um, old engine mounting from when I had uh, a ZXR 400 engine in the uh, in the tank. Um, I think it was a year or so ago. So I'm going to just just um, saw a three-inch section off this one-inch box and I'm going to make up a similar piece to that for the other side and weld it onto here.
you'll have to excuse the noise of the helicopters flying over at the moment. It's uh, Grand National Day here, so uh, there's a lot of uh, aerial activity going on. Now, I've done um, done that part now, that's all welded up and as you can see they fit together quite nice like that so they work now um, I'm gonna get on with uh, this other part over here eventually and kind of work on that but the other part that's um, obviously very important is the ring hitch at the back. Now I tried to try I tried to find something that looked like this that I could modify just using which was made up in a similar way. You can see the uh, the things just uh, like a round loop bar and then it's bent round in a series a series of turns with small webs welded into it if you notice there web there and, a, and there's a web under there and another web here and then it mounts into a very curious unusual design up here on the top now I wasn't able to get anything quite like this the nearest I could get was a very large eye bolt so what I've done is I've mounted this eye bolt in this configuration here and the eye bolt swivels in this nut which is in the bottom of this piece of box section. Now it's 3mm wall box section, 40mm box and I've put a, a, t a bend in it nearly 90 degrees and then I've welded angle um, triangles over it on both sides seamed all the way around and welded on the insides as well uh, to make it as rigid as possible now the idea is that somehow this has to be mounted centrally so that it hooks up hooks up properly onto the uh, onto the jeep now I've put that drop on there set to that distance so that it will be lifted a particular distance from the ground so that I can be certain none of these parts of the trails are going to hit various speed bumps which are in my area so um, have to take all this into account when when I'm making something like this so the question is is how to mount this thing obviously I'm gonna have to well pretty obviously I'm gonna have to shorten this down the reason I left this long it's uh, it was made out of a one meter long bar and for a while I thought about actually having a hole in the end of this trail which is 50 millimeter box section and sliding this piece of box inside it so I'd actually have a hole in the end on that one leg there and slide it in and then just put some bolts through I could put maybe two or three bolts through it so that was an idea I was thinking about using but I'm now going more back to putting it on the top like the real one has so what I'm thinking of doing is either using 50 millimeter box section and welding it on the top and then sliding my 40 millimeter box into it well basically that is what I'm thinking of doing now um, either using 50 mil or make my own piece of box section out of um, 
steel plate and fold it. So, has anyone got any ideas? And I think I'll stop the video at this point and let people give me some ideas on what they think's best to do.